Tim Ferguson shot to fame along with his dodgy mates in the Doug Anthony All-Stars. They met on the streets of Civic and used unsuspecting Canberra audiences to test drive their eccentric and eventually hugely successful blend of comedy and music. Tim was in Canberra this week to revisit the haunts of his youth and to reminisce about a lost love on the Warramanga bus. And then I'm Tim Ferguson, apparently this is where it all began, is it? This is where it all began. This who, very spot. Yeah, who knew where it was going to end up? But yeah, the Doug Anthony All-Stars used to busk in front of this tree. And many times we used to tie Paul to the tree and uh, set fire to him in our reenactment of the burning of Joan of Arc. A couple of times it went wrong and we nearly, we nearly lost Paul McDermott in those events. But, um, yeah, this is where it happened. People would all gather round. Um, quite often, we would invite, you know, people to uh, come forward, come forward. Then we would grab the prams of their children <laughs> and just say, if you don't give us two bucks now, you'll never see these kids again. We will sell them to Parliament House. That's good thinking. Well, Parliament House needs more workers. That's right. So you went from an audience of the occasional public servant and the odd junkie to 15 million TV audiences internationally. It's, yeah, it was a fair old journey. It was, and it happened, you know, very swiftly. We didn't know what was happening. You know what it's like. Someone says, get in the Tarago, drive, 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 and you assume it's because we want to get there quickly, not because the van is being chased by hundreds of people who want to pluck just one hair from your head. It was, uh, yeah, it was great fun, but there's nowhere better than in front of this tree and beautiful Petrie Plaza with the clock shop behind us, the falling to Canberrans, who were a very generous audience, usually because they wanted their kids back. <laughs> You moved to Canberra as a 15-year-old. What are your memories of living in this place? I love the place. It was like heaven. We came from just living in a paddock. And uh, there was hills, and it was blainy, and it was freezing cold. And all of a sudden, there was this wonderland. I went to a school called School Without Walls. And the School Without Walls was a free school in the sense that it was totally free. You could do whatever you wanted. So most of us were nerds. We just went to the library, which was, yeah, yeah. taking <laughs> totally... Really taking advantage of Oh, that. <laughs> man, we were out of control in the library. But, uh, and all of those people have gone on to do some amazing things. Um, a little bit of freedom probably doesn't hurt students. But, uh, you know, we rode bicycles as transport. We'd go to rock concerts. We just put on shows as well. By the time I hit 17, 18, uh, I worked out that there were venues all over town that had let you just come in and do a show. So the Doug Anthony All-Stars would do little shows at uh, rooms that were just rented, like the Kit Kat Club, which wasn't really a club. It was just a poster that was stuck on the door once a week. Cafe Boom Boom out in Narrabunda. Um, uh, Gorman House. There were uh, just all these opportunities, places that you'd go and perform and try out stuff and be and be crap, because everybody's got to be crap for a while, and uh, Canberra is the perfect place to be crap for a while. Well, they're recognising this week Doug Anthony All-Stars at their most crap by unveiling a plaque here where it all started. Is that, does that make you feel pretty good? Yes, the Doug Anthony All-Stars at their most crap uh, occurred right here in this beautiful city, and it was, uh, it was crap, and it's great to have the plaque if only because it uh, helps us with our spatial reasoning, but also every other plaque in that square is of a bogon moth. So Tim, this is Gorman House. This is a, a place, another place where the All-Stars spent their infancy, I guess. Oh yeah, we used to park ourselves in one room or another and put up a piece of paper saying, you know, All-Stars tonight, please wear pants. People would come along and they'd wear pants and we'd put on a show. You know, there's, I'm sure there's yoga going on in this 
complex You can somewhere. smell yoga almost. You can feel the yoga happening, the sincerity. There's nowhere else you can do this. You couldn't do it in Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane. Uh, there's too much competition for the spaces available. Whereas somewhere like this has everything. You've got venues that will seat 20 people, venues that will seat a couple of hundred. Um, and they're all available because Canberra is a city, but it's, you know, it's a small city. Do you enjoy teaching young comedians and guiding them? Is that a scary thing, you mentoring young comedians? It's scarier for them, Chris. It's terrifying for them. Um, if only because, you know, I'm, I carry a very big stick and I wave it around a lot. And, you know, if something's not funny, then I, I will smash something. But it's great fun working with writers of comedy because... It's wonderful seeing people discover that there are principles and they're ancient principles and they actually work. Most people figure that comedy is just something you, you bump into if you're lucky, but it's great to see writers' eyes go wide when they realise, wow, there's something, there's scaffolding that makes this work. You start with Z. Why? <laughs> see? Hey? <laughs> Gee. You'll be back in Canberra next month with your Carry a Big Stick show. Tell us a bit about the show. Well, Carry a Big Stick came out of the fact that these days I have to carry a big stick. Well, it's not that big, but it's, it's pretty big. Uh, and I need this because I have multiple sclerosis, which has a nickname of MS, um, which spells Ms, which is why it's so unpredictable and moody and takes so long to get ready in the morning. Um, and so I thought I'd tell the story of my career from Garima Place busking with Paul and Richard all the way through to the present day which is walking the world with a big stick. It's a funny show, it's a funny story and despite what you might think MS does have some very funny side effects and walking with it round with a stick is in itself just ridiculous. And you were diagnosed uh, after uh, the, the All-Stars broke up and, and your condition played a role in all that by the sound of things. Well, it did. I kept having these symptoms for years and years and they kept coming back and becoming more and more severe until it meant that, you know, I had to find a new way of, of uh, getting around the world and a new kind of career. So it was, uh, it was a long period of adjustment which worked out pretty well. You know, these days I can go around the world doing the Carrier Big Stick show and... Uh, people come along a little bit scared and they usually leave, you know, happy, a little bit inspired, a little bit feeling like everything's okay. People with MS have come to see the show and had a great time and most of the time will meet me afterwards saying, thank God, someone is saying, you know, our life doesn't end when we find out we've got this thing. So the doctor says there is something wrong with your brain. And I said, you've seen my work? You know, they took a picture of my brain and the doctor pointed to all these little white smudges and spots in my brain and uh, said, you know, these are clusters of tiny little brain scars. And all that happens really is that my brain at the moment doesn't talk to my left leg from my knee down. They're just not having a conversation. They're, they're like a married couple. It's fine, they're still connected, there's no way they'll ever live without each other, but they're just not talking right now. Is it difficult to be funny when you are living with a, a degenerative, chronic medical condition? It's easier. It's much easier. For starters, I walk on stage and get applause just for walking. Oh, good on him. Bravo. Good on that man. So, uh, uh, no, and there's more... There's more fear and anxiety uh, in the background of a uh, comedy life dealing with this sort of stuff. So it means you're not so scared of breaching topics that other people might breach. For example, death is a big one to talk about. And it always gets people going, death. So in fact, I think it's better. I've got a much better career walking around the world with this thing than if I was skipping around like a lot of other able-bodied comedians who don't get applause for just walking. And in your teenage years in Canberra you had some unrequited love. Uh, on the school bus there was someone who caught your eye? Caught my eye? 
I would look at her, she would look at me. I'd look away, I'd blush. She'd look away, I'd look back. Backwards, forwards, backwards, door. It just went on and on, we never spoke. And I should have spoken to her because that was Katie Gallagher and she became the leader of Canberra, Canberra's own personal goddess. <sighs> Opportunities lost. Do you think you need to be reunited one day? Oh yeah. And when that happens, there'll be a warm and hearty handshake with eye contact. Ah, oh, Katie! Hi. Hello, how wonderful to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. And we get to talk. Exactly. Minus my cello oh. and an action bus. Yeah, you're always carrying a cello on that bus. Yeah, I had you pictured as a bit of a cool cat myself. But yeah. I was in a Melrose High School uniform, so with a cello. So yeah. anyone was probably a lot cooler than me. And it was a busy bus. Oh, there were always lots of people there, but we noticed each other. Mm, I did think you must have been an arty kind of person because you, you looked arty. So it was no surprise to see you, turn, you know, on stage and performing. Oh, is that tea for me? Bloody hell, I need yeah. a cup of tea. And in the interest of impartiality, I have to tell you, Katie, I also have a fondness for Zed and for the Greens candidate, what's his name, Cabbage. <laughs> And Tim Ferguson will be back in town with his show Carry a Big Stick at the Canberra Theatre on October 19th. And in the interest of election balance, if you are the long-lost love of Zed Seselja or Meredith Hunter, please give us a call.